It's out the motherfucking pack Right out the niggas don't know how to act Hello, 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 and welcome back to yet another college football video today. Uh, you know, when I made that SEC video, which is going through every team and what I thought about them and how they'd end up finishing, I actually really enjoyed doing that. So uh, I'm going to do this for the Big Ten now. You know, I feel like it kind of keeps my mind sharp, keeps me up to date with what every team's doing, the moves they made, and uh, kind of gives me a real early look. I'm not going to do my top 25 yet i'm gonna give it a couple more weeks probably got a got a few other videos I'm probably gonna wait till after the draft matter of fact um but yeah i'm probably gonna go through this do this for the big 10 today uh big 12 soon and i don't know if i want to do the acc man acc is so fucking garbage <laughs> uh no nah, i might end up doing the acc who cares but let's get right into it man before i get started thank you for watching Starting off, man, first team we're going to talk about, and there's a lot of fucking teams in the Big Ten. I did not fucking realize how many there were. But uh, first up, we got Illinois. Illinois, you know, two years ago was a very interesting and exciting team. You know, they had an 8-5 and five season, but they started off like 6-0 and oh or something like that. They had to like the top 20. They had a great defense. Uh, but that season did not finish so well. They went 8-5. and five. And under head coach Brett Belima, they are 18-19. and 19. And they also have not won a bowl game since 2011. That's a, that, yeah, that's a pretty long time. That's a pretty long time to not win a bowl game. Um, and after a pretty good 2022, last year was not the best. They had zero wins last season by seven or more points. So the few games they did manage to put together, yeah, it was not very impressive. Illinois was just not good at all last season. The defense, it came and went. And offensively, it was it was rough. A lot of turnovers, not many high scoring games. It was it was just not not good all around last season. Few bright points for Illinois. Quarterback by the name of Paddock had over a thousand yards in the final three games. Um, so I don't know if he's going to be the star next season. Luke Altmeyer is still on the team, I believe. Um, he threw like four picks against or five picks against Iowa, I think. Or was it Penn State or Iowa? It was one of those two teams. So I I don't know. I don't like what Illinois has talent-wise. They've lost a lot of talented players, mainly defensively, to the NFL over the last two years. So I'm afraid that that defense is not going to be able to recover from that. Um, and I feel like Brett Belima, Iowa, or it's not Iowa, sorry, Illinois, a lot of I teams in Big Ten. But I do feel like Illinois is going to be on pace for back-to-back -back losing seasons. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say around four or five games. Five games if they're lucky. Next up, we got Indiana. Indiana, they got a head coach. They got the head coach from James Madison. Obviously, James Madison, you know, very good team last season, but Indiana, not so much. They had the worst record in the Big Ten. I believe it was two or ten or three and nine. I think it was three and nine actually. Curtis Rourke, quarterback, transferred in from Ohio because last season Indiana, they had two quarterbacks and neither of them were very good. So Curtis Rourke, Curtis Rourke, I cannot say that name for some reason. From Ohio, not sure what to expect from him. They did get a lot. Elijah Surratt, though, from James Madison. He was kind of their star receiver, you know. And I was kind of hoping Jordan McLeod transferred in from James Madison, but that did not end up happening. But at least they got a wide receiver one now at Indiana. Um, so it might actually, you know, if, if if Curtis Rourke pans out and he's throwing to Elijah Surratt, that might actually be a little, little exciting offense there. But they've had three straight losing seasons and uh, it's going to be four in a row. You know, they. I do think Indiana is at the bottom of the conference. First year head coach, first season. It's just, I don't think it's going to be a lot of, it's not going to be a lot of pretty scores for Indiana in year one. But I do think they are worse than Illinois. I think three or four wins next season. Next up, we got Iowa. Best team so far. Unfortunately with Iowa, it's, you know, same thing, different year. Amazing defense. Amazing special teams. But God, man, that offense fucking sucks. <laughs> it's, it's it's so bad, man. And I kind of am like a like a pity fan of Iowa, but it's like, man, whenever I see someone rank Iowa or like put them in the top twenty, even, and like you got them playing like New Year six games against it, it's like, what are you doing, man? Iowa didn't score their last two games. Keep in mind what I just said; they were ranked at one point two. Iowa didn't score. Their last two games, like I think I believe it was against Michigan and Tennessee. Like, 
man, come on. You know, I know they got Cade McNamara last season. He got hurt halfway through, I believe. The bat replacement, I think his name was like Deacon Hill or something like that. He fucking sucked, man. But even when McNamara was out there and was healthy, they didn't look too good. Um, and they don't use a transfer portal. I believe the only player they got in the transfer portal is uh, Caden Proctor from Alabama, which I'll, I, if you had to only pick one guy to get, that's a pretty good guy to get. Offensive lineman, stud offensive lineman coming home to Iowa. But it's like, bro, we got some Dabo Sweeney syndrome going on here where it's like, you're not good enough to compete in your conference, but you're not using the transfer pro- – does, does, does Iowa really think that their recruiting classes are enough to, to position them in near the top of the Big Ten? It's, it's not true. It's not the case. So they're kind of just killing themselves by not using the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, they have had seven 10-win seasons under head coach Kirk Ferentz. But honestly, I, I don't think another one's in the future. I don't think Kirk Ferentz will get another 10-win season at Iowa, even if they do end up winning a bowl game. You know, I think their their absolute ceiling this, this season is nine wins, but I think that's a little a little extreme. I think seven or eight is more likely. I think there's going to be awful again offensively. And um, I just don't think it's going to get any better, man. This might be Kirk Ferentz's last year, actually, at Iowa. But it is the best team we've talked about so far. And all I'm fucking word, word for word off this goddamn notepad here. A lot of teams. Take it like four or five pages. Um, next up, we have Maryland. Maryland's a strange team because I feel like they're in a good direction under head coach Mike Loxley. Um, they're they're kind of they were one of those teams where it's like I feel like if if Maryland was in the West, like they would have made multiple uh, Big Ten championship game appearances in the last like three or four years because you kind of just had to pencil in three losses for them every year, unfortunately, you know, because they could never beat Ohio State, could never beat Michigan, could never beat Penn State, but they kept it close for the most part. Like, I remember that Ohio State game was really, really close. I remember that Michigan game was really, really close, but they couldn't pull it off. Um, Tua's little brother was gone, which, you know, it was so weird because, like, I always felt like Maryland fans were kind of hyping him up as, like, this, this really, really good player, but I feel like it's weird because I don't think he was very good, honestly, but he might have been at like the best that they could have done at Maryland. So they might struggle now in comparison at quarterback. Um, but they've had three straight winning seasons. They've won three straight bowl games, which is impressive. Um, the good news is they don't have to play Michigan or Ohio State this year. So I feel like I, I, they got some momentum. If they can just figure out the quarterback position, because I don't know who it's going to be, but, you know, just based off that with their schedule, you would like to think that this could possibly be a breakthrough year for Maryland, but a lot of players transferred out, and their second half of the schedule was not very promising. Like, it gets rough fast. But, you know, I, I, I could see them winning seven games, maybe eight with a bowl game, you know. So I think they're going to put together a fourth straight winning season under Mike Loxley, and I do think this new format in the Big Ten, no more con- or no more divisions, is going to help Maryland more so than other teams. Second best team we've talked about so far, above Illinois, below Iowa. Next up, we got Michigan. You know, people are already writing off Michigan this year, and I'm one of those people. <laughs> uh, look, man. You don't lose as much. They, didn't they just break the record for players since the combine? The reason they were so good and so successful is because they had so many seniors and super seniors on that roster, and you lose all of those guys, and you lose your quarterback who, look, I've made no gripes about it. I don't think McCarthy's that talented. But, I mean, Alex Orgy, he's, he's better than Alex Orgy, bro. Look, Cade McNamara took this team to the playoffs, you know, so they didn't need a – a, a star studded you know quarterback but you know to lose a guy and to transition to somebody that we know nothing about is going to be difficult um Sherrod Moore new head coach I don't know what to think about him um yeah man the the the, the theme here is just losing too much talent and not having enough coming in to replace that it's impossible to replace that much in year but I don't know why people are so delusional about that like yeah, if you don't rank Michigan in the top five, for some reason, you're a hater. But honestly, I think that's too generous. I don't have Michigan in my top 10. And I don't, I don't even know if I can have my top 12. They just, 
their whole roster is a question mark. You lose your most important player in Blake, Blake Corum. You're going to lose multiple players on both lines of scrimmage. You're going to lose Mike Sanders still. It's like, how, how, how am I supposed to just overlook all of that? Who are Michigan's receivers? Who's going to be catching passes? Who's, who's going to be throwing passes? Is, uh, what's his name? Did Donovan Edwards stay? I don't know, because even he did not look very consistent in the regular season. So I don't know what Michigan's going to look like next year. I would assume it's going to be more of the same gritty, run the ball, you know, tough nose defense, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it as well. So, yeah. They're the best team I have on, I've said so far, in these five teams, but I don't think they're a contender for national championship, certainly. Uh, maybe if they somehow manage to beat Ohio State, you could sneak into the 12 team playoff. But yeah, I see Michigan as like a nine win team next season, and that's being a little generous. Next up, we got Michigan State, which is, you know, they're one, they were one of the worst teams in the country last year. Um, I think that's fair. Even if the record didn't necessarily show, I think they won like four games, but it felt a lot worse than that at times, man. Um, obviously, Mel Tucker had some type of situation go on, you know, some controversial thing. They had to let him go. Brought in Jonathan Smith and Aiden Childs from Oregon State, which, you know, a lot of people clap their hands at. I'm not sold on it. I need to see it to believe that it's going to work out. Um, they have four straight losses, like, built into their schedule. I think it's, like, the middle of their schedule, too, which is going to be – it's just rough to overcome that. And Aiden Childs, I don't really get – I think he was, like, the number one quarterback in the transfer portal. I don't know why. I was not impressed with what I saw last year at Oregon State. Maybe he was like a freshman or something. I don't know, but it's like, what have I seen so far from Aiden Childs to make me think he's just this pencil him in as a star at Michigan State? I I don't know. I don't see it. Not saying it can't happen, but I think it's going to be rough next year at Michigan State, honestly. I see four to five wins, and, you know, I would not surprise me at all if they were the worst team in the Big Ten next year. So, yeah, pump the brakes on Michigan State, please, for their own good. Next up, Minnesota. Uh, definition of mid is the first thing I wrote down here. It just feels like Minnesota. They're never bad enough, you know, to talk about, you know, head coach getting fired or anything like that. But they're never good enough to beat a Penn State, and Ohio State, Michigan. Not good enough to, you know, to be in the Big Ten championship game. You know, they're just there. They're just there in the Big Ten West and. Minnesota is a team where I feel like this uh, this merge is kind of going to affect them negatively now because you don't get to just sit in the West and chill anymore. You know, it's you're you're kind of in you're swimming in the deep waters now. And I don't think Minnesota is going to be able to float, to be honest with you. Um, the good news is they've won seven straight bowl games, which is incredibly impressive. That tells me that head coach, I think his name is like P.J. Fleck or something like that. He gets his team motivated. And when a big game comes around, they win that game, at least the bowl game, not, you know, the actual important regular season games. But they did get rid of a bad quarterback. Um, so I think that's going to be an addition by subtraction situation right there. Not sure who the new guy is, but, you know, they should be a good running team. They've made some good uh, transfer portal additions there. They have a really good stable of running backs. Um, and not too difficult of a schedule either. I do think Minnesota is a team that could look pretty solid next year. I see six to eight wins right now, and I think they're just just below Iowa, I would say, that team we've talked about so far. Nebraska. I got some hope for Nebraska, some real hope for Nebraska moving forward. I think Matt Rule is – I think he has a proven track record as a college football coach. NFL is kind of irrelevant here. We've seen what he did at uh, Baylor. And before, where was he? Where was he before? Was it Miami of Ohio? Was it Cincinnati? It was something like that. It was some G5 team that he did the same thing. He kind of over three or four years, he really built them up to the same thing as Baylor at Baylor. And people don't really talk about it, but I thought he was good year one for Nebraska. Um, and they're actually ahead of pace on Matt Rule's schedule because he usually, wherever he takes over year one, they're awful, but then they, they improve rapidly. Year one at Nebraska, they weren't awful. They were pretty okay. Um, I I think they had multiple good wide receiver acquisitions in the transfer portal. Um, the only question would be the quarterback, but Jeff Sims was so bad last year, you can't really get much worse than that. So, yeah, 
I think seven to nine wins for Nebraska. And I actually think they're going to be better. Well, maybe not better than Iowa, but they're right there with Iowa. Like I would not be shocked at all if Iowa wins like seven games next year and Nebraska wins like nine. Like I'm not sure if I'd willing to, you know, if I'd necessarily bet on that, but that would not shock me whatsoever. Next, we got Northwestern. You know, they kind of shocked the world. I mean, nobody talked about this, but Northwestern, after what they went through with the, the scandal with their coach and all that, like I thought Northwestern was going to put together like a two-win season. They were lucky because who overcomes that type of controversies in such a short amount of time with a bad roster? Like, it's, it shocked me for them to win eight games. And they beat Utah in a bowl game. So, you know, that was great. But that was last season, right? Next year's schedule is not friendly for Northwestern. It does not look good. And the good news is they didn't have an impressive roster last year or this upcoming year. So, you know, it doesn't really – it's kind of shown me that they can win games while being the less talented team. But, you know, is that sustainable? You know, I'm not not too sure. Um, They didn't really make any big transfer portal additions. They did lose several players. Um, I just I think it's going to be too tough to recreate that amount of success against a more difficult schedule. With just you can't you can't be going into all of these games as the significantly less talented teams and keep pulling up out you know pulling out upsets. I just don't think it's sustainable. So I see four to five wins for Northwestern, and I put them right above Michigan State in that bottom tier. Not bottom tier, but they're better than Michigan State. So far, that's usually talked about. Next up, this whole page is heavy hitters in there. Ohio State. Arguably the best roster in the whole country. And I say that confidently. You know, think of these other top contenders. Georgia, not nearly as well-rounded, not nearly as many NFL caliber seniors as Ohio State. Um, yeah. It's just, it's by a wide margin, the best roster in the Big Ten. Um, They lost back-to-back games at the end of last season. (laughs) Do not think that will happen this year. They got the best running back and the best defensive back in the transfer portal in Caleb Downs and Quinshawn Judkins. Um, And on top of that, Travion Henderson coming back. Mecca Igbuka coming back. Uh, Is it it, uh, Denzel Burke, the uh, cornerback, coming back? Defensive end, Tuli uh, Pulu, whatever his name is, coming back. They're all coming back. All these guys I just named were going to be first or second round picks in the NFL. They decided to come back because they looked at what was going on and say, hold on, we have a great chance to win a national championship next year. Um, the only weakness last year that was holding them back, I feel like, was their quarterback because Kyle McCord kind of sucked, you know, um, and it was not good enough. It was not the standard at Ohio State. Uh Will Howard will be the new guy. Got him out of the transfer portal from Kansas State. Um, Will Howard. I didn't think Will Howard was that impressive or bad, actually. He's kind of just a guy who – he's a good Big 12 quarterback. Can he transition to a Big 10 team with a lot of talent around him? I think I think they're going to be asking Will Howard to do a lot of what Kyle McCord was doing last year, just a lot of game managing. Hope I'm sure they'd love to run the ball better than they did last season. I'm sure that's in their plans. Um, but I think Will Howard, with his legs and things like that, is just capable of contributing in more ways than McCord was. And I also do think he's a better thrower of the football and things of that nature. So I do think Will Howard will be a significant upgrade at quarterback, even though he's not, you know, he's not anything special, right? He's nobody's gonna be talking about Will Howard, the first or second round pick. Nobody's talking about that. But I think he can certainly take Ohio State all the way to the top. Um Ohio State is my pick to win the Big Ten. And, I mean, it's hard for me to see a way where they don't at least make the national championship. On paper, they're the best roster in the country. Uh, Next, we got Oregon. You know, Dylan Gabriel was the best transfer portal quarterback, and it wasn't close. Some people saying Riley Leonard, not at all. It's, It's not even close. Dylan Gabriel was like a top six quarterback, maybe even a top five quarterback in the country last year. Look at the stats, man. He was he was mad. He was ridiculous at Oklahoma. And I think he is the best quarterback in the Big Ten by a why I don't think it's close. Who would you even who would you even like I'm just looking through these teams right now. Who would you even compare? Who compares to Dylan Gabriel? I don't see anybody. Maybe Will Rogers, but hell no. 
Tyler Van Dyke? Fuck no. Drew Aller? Hell no. Dylan Gabriel is the best quarterback in the Big Ten by a wide margin. Um, and on top of that, they got three starting DBs from the transfer portal, including a Jabbar Muhammad from Washington. Like that's a that's an NFL caliber guy that came back and transferred to Oregon. Um also got Evan Stewart out of the transfer portal, massive receiver get. Like they had the best offense on country or offense in the country last year, statistically, I believe. And if they can recreate even some of that, you know, they as long as they don't have like a Tennessee type fall off offensively, I think Oregon's a, a surefire bet to make the Big Ten championship game. As far as who wins between them and Ohio State, I'm not sure, but they play in the regular season. That'll be an amazing game to a massively important game to watch. And, you know, I think they're I think it's gonna be the same thing that Oregon went through last year. They played Washington in the regular season, rematch them in the Pac-12 championship game. I think they're gonna play Ohio State in the regular season, rematch them in the Big Ten championship game. So they, I think Oregon's a damn good team, extremely well coached, great offense, great quarterback. Um, yeah, I think they're the second best team in the conference. I got them ten out ten or eleven wins if they beat Ohio State. Next, we've got Penn State. Um, in Penn State's three biggest games this season, I watched them all. Ole Miss, Ohio State, and Michigan. They did not show up offensively in any of those games. That has left such a such a, a sour taste in my mouth. As a because I, I I'm not a fan, I'm not a hater, I'm not anything like that. But I picked Penn State very highly last season. I rated them very highly because I was looking at the roster especially defensively. I'm like, damn, this is one of the best teams in the country. And they were arguably the best defense in the country. But their offense, even with all the benefits that came with all the short fields, all the turnovers their defense forced, they weren't worth a damn. I shouldn't say the whole offense. The running backs were good. Offensive line at times was good. The quarterback, Drew Aller, did nothing. Nothing in big. He had three big games. I think he got hurt against Ole Miss or something like that. But in eight quarters against Michigan, Ohio State, didn't do anything that impressed me anything they didn't have any good receivers even though i thought keandre lambert smith dante cephas on paper were competent they just didn't make any use of them so i think that i think that's a reflection on james franklin just as an overrated coach no uh no will to want to improve offensively because i still got drew aller didn't see them make any big gets in the wide receiver market they got julian fleming from ohio state but you know julian fleming as a wide receiver one when we're comparing him to guys like a mecca buka you know, Evan Stewart, guys like that. I just I just don't see it, man. So Penn State, I think it's gonna be a similar story, even though they lost Manny Diaz, I believe, to he went and coached somewhere else in ACC, I think, if I'm thinking correctly. But yeah, I think it's gonna be more of the same. Um good news is they don't have to play Michigan or Oregon for the, that's good for them. Um, but you still you're gonna need a top ten defense at least. You're probably gonna need a top five defense to carry this offense. Um, you need Drew Aller to break out because if he doesn't break out, you know, get him the fuck out of town. This is James Franklin's last chance. I kind of I've already given up on James Franklin. But I feel like if he doesn't get it done this year, if he doesn't make the college football playoff this year, I'm sure the public is just going to be completely done with him. I do see them winning ten games with a bowl game, um, but I have them right below Oregon. But I do not see Penn State as an actual contender to do anything. You know, come playoff time or anything like that. It don't impress me if they even make the playoff, you know, as that 11th or 12th team. Next up, we got Purdue. Uh, Purdue, similar situation to Michigan State, where in their schedule, they just have four built in losses. Like they got four games in their schedule where it's just they have no chance. You know, I don't even consider them giving them a possibility in any of those games. Um, I think they made the Big Ten championship two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. They lost all those guys. It was a really talented team, especially Aiden O'Connell. Um, Charlie Jones, guys like that, they lost them all. None of them are still there. Um, and they're just not good enough roster-wise to compete with these top-tier teams, even the mid-tier teams, really. Like, they are not on the same level as Nebraska, I don't think, or Maryland, for example. Um, hate to kind of shit on Purdue like this, but they need a reset, I feel like, in their program. They're not – they're bleeding talent, and they're not replacing it at all. Four to six wins – you know, six wins being generous and, you know, right above Michigan State is where I put them. Bottom tier, though, unfortunately. Next up, we got Rutgers. Rutgers is a very interesting team. Because if you look at what they did last year, 
you know, they had a long rebuild, long rebuild, but I feel like it finally paid off for them. They have their most wins since 2014. And if you look at it, they played 13 games last year because they played a bowl game. There were six teams they played that they were worse than. They they lost all six of those games, right? But then there were seven teams they played where I feel like they were the better team. They won all seven of those games. And you you probably hear that and you're like, obviously you lose you lose, but that's not how it always works. The better team doesn't always win. But in Rutgers case, that's absolutely what happened all 13 games. It's it's really weird that that happens. Like, I hope I explained that well. Like, on paper, like, if you were to just judge Rutgers season based on paper, you would have been 100% right. Like, no upsets, just straight how it should have been, which is very interesting to me. Because they have an extremely favorable schedule next year. So, if the trend continues and they are able to be one of these teams that takes care of, like, these mid-tier teams, they usually don't hold up their end of the bargain in terms of, you know, clean sweeping teams that they're better than. They usually get upset by a, a, a really not good team. That's not the case with Rutgers. So if they keep that up, if they have a really favorable schedule next season, I could easily see them pulling pulling together seven or eight wins because they don't play Ohio State. They don't play Michigan. They don't play Oregon. Like, so I think eight wins for Rutgers next season is extremely possible. So I have them above Maryland and, you know, I think I think Rutgers is going to put together back to back seven plus one seasons, which is very impressive for Rutgers because they were they're, they're kind of the meme of the Big Ten for a while, kind of the Vanderbilt of the Big Ten, but that's not the case anymore. Next up, we got UCLA. You know, lost their head coach, and they lost a lot of guys. Man, they like the amount of NFL players UCLA has put into the NFL the last two years is actually really impressive. But uh, obviously, the flip side of that being you're not able to replace that, you know, at all. And I think they're going to have a tough time adjusting to Big Ten football. Um, And it's a very tough schedule, man. You have 10 straight games for UCLA where I cannot confidently say they're going to win. Like, I might pick them in two or three of these games, but I would not be confident in that whatsoever. So that's 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 tough, man. Um, And I just think they're, you know, they're the newest team on this conveyor belt of mid-teams in the Big Ten, like teams that – like Minnesota and, and Maryland and Nebraska, where it's like, I just, I don't see them elevating anytime soon. I don't think this head coach is going to do, I don't even know his name. Uh, I think it was like a former running back or something like that, but I don't think he's going to do well. I think it's going to be tough to kind of get out of this, this ditch of being in the, the no man's land of the big 10. And I see a five or a six win season next year, maybe seven, but I would not, I, mean, I, feel, I see a five or a six win season for UCLA next year right below Minnesota. Next up, we got USC. A lot of the same things about UCLA I can say about USC, um, but I think the adjustment for USC is going to be more difficult because I just don't think they're physical enough to handle Big Ten football. Like, a team like Minnesota, I feel like would kill USC, like, honestly. And and they don't have the, uh, the Caleb Williams factor anymore to just fall back on, like, you can't give up 40 points like you did to, to Cal and to Colorado and win that game. You're going to lose. If they give up 30-plus points this season, they're probably going to lose all of those games. You know, and they have no layups in conference schedule. Like, they're, like, I don't – I wouldn't, like, be confident in picking USC against anybody in the Big Ten. Um, the defense is just beyond suspect. You know, I know Alex, Alex Grinch is gone, but, like, USC, it's going to take multiple years – of Lincoln Riley's defenses to impress me before I could actually like just be confident in that. Like it, it's such a long track record of no defense and just not even like not even physical. Like Colorado had no defense last year, but at least they tried. Like, at least they gave effort. At least they were like physical at times. USC just has shows me nothing defensively. Um, like they won three games last year. Like they gave up forty plus points. Like that's not happening this year. Like and they weren't a good team last year. So what does that say? It's, it's, I'd be shocked if you see a USC win seven games. Like, I do not think they're a factor at all in the Big Ten. Like, there's, there's an easy five or six teams I'd get to before I talked about USC. Maybe even like seven. Like, I don't think USC is on Rutgers level, honestly. Like, I don't even think it's going to be close. Like, I, I think Rutgers has a better chance of winning 10 games than you see, than USC has of winning eight games. And that might sound crazy to you, but I think it's true. Um, I do not think Lincoln Riley will ever have 
another 10 win season at USC. That might sound crazy, but I think it's true. I don't know if that means he leaves the NFL or to become an offensive coordinator or leave somewhere else. I don't know what that means, but I would bet a lot of money that Lincoln Riley does not win 10 games in the Big Ten. So take that for what you will. I have them between six. My apologies. I have them between six and seven wins sitting right below Nebraska. Next up, we got Washington. Um, obviously, a team like Washington just have they had a mass exodus of both talent and coaches. Um, Jeb Fish stepped in, new head coach from Arizona. That's a pretty good hire, I feel like. Um, Will Rogers, new quarterback, which, you know, I feel like if they keep that same style they had last year, I feel like Will, Ro- Will Rogers is a pretty good fit for that. Um, but it's going to be a difficult adjustment. They have six games on their schedule where I don't feel good at all. Like, it's it's going to be 50-50 toss-ups in all of those games. Um, I just – I don't think they're going to be able to gel in one knee or all the new moving parts they have. Like, this is a – it's a rough time for Washington to move into the Big Ten. Um, I think eight, I think nine wins, you would throw a party. You'd celebrate if they got to nine wins, especially in the regular season. But I think eight wins is a little more realistic. Um, and I got, I got them below Michigan, you know, it's weird that both the teams that just played in the national championship, they just, they both lost so much talent. I just, I don't see like a team like Georgia and Alabama, like those are the only two teams that I really see, like could point to and be like, okay, I know these teams are going to recycle talent year in and year out. Washington and Michigan, especially with losing both their coaches, like you don't, you don't just bounce back from that year one, bro. So. I don't, I don't feel confident either of those teams moving forward, even though I think they are still both above the, the mid-teams in the Big Ten. Next up, we got Wisconsin. Um, year one with Luke Fickle, extremely disappointing. I was expecting a lot. I expected Wisconsin to win the Big Ten West, and that didn't happen because they were not good. I think they won seven games. Um, they, they tried to go for a new passing style offense, um, turned their back on guys like Braylon Allen. It didn't work, bro. Um, Tanner Mordecai came in and didn't look good. Uh, he got hurt back up, didn't look good either. And honestly, they got nine games on next year's schedule that they could lose. Nine. And based off what I saw last year, I'm not confident in picking them in any of those games. So, I mean – they got, they got Tyler Van Dyke, right, new quarterback, transfer out of Miami. But I can't get excited about that because look what happened with Tanner Mordecai. It's just – it's the same story, in my opinion. Uh, they lost Braylon Allen to the NFL, and I, I just I just don't like it. I think these teams – these teams like Wisconsin and Iowa and, and Minnesota, I think they're going to suffer now that they have to play anybody and they don't just get a free bid to – the Big Ten championship game by being the best in the West because the best in the West was always bad. Sometimes they were solid, but not anymore. It's not going to cut anymore. You can't just be the uh, the best nine win team and make the Big Ten championship anymore. You know, you're not going to, you can't, you're not, they're not going to beat Washington. They're not going to beat Oregon. They're going to struggle with the USC's and the USC LA's most likely. So yeah, I, I don't think Wisconsin is going to survive this new era. I got them at six or seven wins right below Iowa. Yeah, so that's how I feel about that. Now, after saying all that, let's take a look at the visual element here to kind of help y'all envision what I was just talking about. So here's how I think it's going to look. Starting from the bottom, uh, Purdue, Michigan State, Indiana, all down around there, and they are free wins in my opinion. Not free wins for this mid-tier category, as you can see from Wisconsin all the way to Illinois, they could beat those teams, right? Like it would be a dog fight if Michigan State played Minnesota probably. But any starting from one through seven, if any of those teams played Purdue, Michigan State, Indiana, I do not expect them to lose like at all, right? Like I, I feel pretty confident in those, those seven teams. The, the mid-tier, you know, they could probably steal a game from that, that better than mid category, like Rutgers could probably lose to Maryland or, or Iowa might lose to Nebraska or Washington could possibly lose to USC or something like that. Right. But I don't think Penn state or Michigan is losing to anybody in the mid category. 
And I don't think anybody in the mid category is capable of winning eight or more games. Like that's kind of where I draw that line. So yeah. And the mid, unfortunately is the biggest category, the biggest category in the big 10 right now. SEC had a lot of better than mid teams and a lot of really good teams. Big 10 right now just doesn't really have that. And you would hope in the future, a team like Maryland or Nebraska could kind of step into that, that category above them. Hopefully in a perfect world, Wisconsin would too. But, you know, that mid category is a little too big for my liking right now. Then you got the better than me, right? Washington, after their mass exodus, I think falls into this category. Iowa is on their last legs. Um, you know, the dying breed. And, you know, I don't think they have much time left. And Rutgers, you know, shout out to Rutgers, ascended rapidly from a free win team all the way into this better than mid category. Because like I said, they could win nine games. I think eight wins is, mo- is you know, realistic, but – Eight, nine with a bowl game, like Rutgers could certainly do that. And then you got the really good teams. These are teams where I don't think that they're going to be contenders for the Big Ten championship or, you know, the college football playoff or anything like that. But I do think if Penn State or Michigan were to knock off in Oregon or in Ohio State on their schedule, then we could start talking about possibly making and winning the Big Ten championship game or, you know, making the college football playoff. But as it stands, I don't think either of those two teams are good enough to to make any real noise in the, on the national scale. But Oregon, Ohio State, I think both of these teams are going to be – I think Ohio State's probably going to be number one for me, and Oregon is going to be in my top five, almost certainly. Like, I just think Oregon's really good. I love Dan Lanning as a coach. The moves they made, like, they're ready to reload and get right back into winning games. And I do think that is going to be my pick for the Big Ten uh, championship game. And they play each other tw- – they, if that's the case, they play th- each other twice. I don't know who wins that second time. So, yeah. That's going to be it for this video, though, man. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Comment if you think I was wrong. Did I put your team, your favorite team, in a tier unbecoming of them that they did not belong in? Let me know, man. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And peace. Out the motherfucker pack. Right out the niggas don't know how to act.